in this segment, let's look at the discussion on decision making with probabilities. Now, the same three uh, set of information must be available in addition to a new set of information called probabilities. What are the three sets of information again? Uh, the set of payoff information, they must be all exhaustively and correctly uh, and precisely known. The set of all states of nature, all the possible outcomes, not even one short, must be known. All the decision alternatives, the third set of information, must be known and available. Okay, so now let's get on with uh, the discussion on decision making with probabilities. Okay? Now let's use the same example as before, the payoff and the state of nature and the set of decision alternatives so that we can compare. Um, the way it goes is, this is new to us, the set of probabilities. So it's now saying that even though S1 may have $2 million, $1 million, half a million dollars, right, pretty high relative to uh, the other two state of natures, uh, the probability, the chance that S1 will happen is just 10%. We can get this 10% perhaps from past database, from past experience, from asking several experts, from various research. Yeah. So no matter what, we have a good feel that S1, yeah, great promise, good payoffs, 10% only. Um, and S2, mediocre payoffs, 60%, that's the norm. And S3, having losses even, 30%. Fortunately, it's not high, but then 0.3 compared to 0.6 uh, compared to 0.1 is also not too low. And so how can we absorb this probability information and uh, uh, in so doing change our decision or else reaffirm our decision? So the way it goes is that we calculate the EV or the expected values of a particular decision. So let's say that again. It is the expected value of a particular decision alternative, not about the state of nature. State of nature has probability. Decision alternative has expected value. So they are very clear in their terminologies. Let's not get that mixed up, okay? Now, it is very simple to calculate the EV. The way it goes is that the EV of a decision alternative is the sum product of the payoffs with the probabilities. So the way it goes is 0 0.5 times, let's record that down, uh, 0 0.5 times 0 0.1, that's the probability, plus 0 0.4, the payoff, times 0 0.6, plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.3. So, so if we do that calculation, we'll get 0 0.38. Then we repeat the same for decision alternative D2, right? So to get 0 0.49 as the expected value for D2, we have 1.0, our payoff, times 0 0.1, plus 0 0.6 times 0 0.6, because that's the probability as well, plus 0 0.1 times probability 0 0.3. So we get 0 0.49. And finally, for decision alternative D3, we get 2.0 because that's the payoff that we get if S1 were to happen, but that happens with 10% of the time, so we times 0.1. Plus 0 0.5, the payoff times 0 0.6, plus, oh, yeah, we have to do a negative 0 0.5, right? I put in brackets so that I don't confuse myself, uh, times 0.3, okay? So we get 0 0.38, 0 0.49, 0 0.35. Then what? Well. These are basically some product of the payoffs with the probabilities. Yes, I did say that. But we can kind of qualitatively think about the expected values as summary of all the goodness or badness of making that particular decision such as D1. So when we make a decision D1, we may face S1, S2 or S3, right? With different payoffs and probabilities. Let's think of a summary of all those information as EV. Uh, and for EV, the higher the better because it still uh, has the unit dollars millions, same unit as the payoff. So EV has the same unit as payoff. 
well, let's not forget that. So EV has same unit as payoff. And therefore, if payoff is our profits, then the higher the better. We should certainly choose one, choose a, choose a, a decision alternative that gives us highest payoffs or expected value of the payoffs, right? So in this case, uh, the maximum is 0 0.49. Right, so this means our decision is D2. So D2 is our best decision under the expected value approach. And EV summarizes the payoffs and the probabilities by doing a sum product of all of them, combining them into a single value. You can think of EV as a summary of all these outcomes. You can think of EV as the objective function right, to let us measure this entire table of numbers and then pick the best because we are trying to maximize the EV and we'll choose the decision alternative that will maximize the EV, our EV.